my daughter asked me to convert her 9-speed triple to a 1x in the front. This would greatly simplify the shifting for her. She didn't care about barreling down hills, but wanted to get up some of the steep hills. So we followed a technique similar to that in the video in the upper right. We did one additional thing. We removed the bottom bracket, 68 millimeter, with a axle from one end to the other of 113 millimeters and replaced it with another 68 millimeter bottom bracket, but the axle to axle length on this is 107. And we did this to try to improve the chain line. The front chain ring is what we call a narrow wide. It has narrow teeth alternating with wide teeth. This is important as we put on the chain. We can see that the wide teeth fit in the wide portions of the link, the small in the small portions of the link, and these wide teeth keep the chain from jumping off and eliminate the need for a derailleur to prevent any chain drop. All right, let's review what we've changed. We've taken off the triple and we've put a single 38T narrow wide chain ring in the front. In the back, we have a nine speed cassette 1136. Notice we've also removed the front derailleur. Let's see how it works. We'll go ahead and shift just nicely and quietly. But as we get up to the largest cassette cog, we get a considerable amount of noise which appears to be coming from the front single wide uh, chain ring. Also, if you buy, pedal backwards, which I don't recommend nor do on my bicycle, but apparently some people do, you will notice that the chain will jump from the largest cassette cog down to one of the smaller. Let's put it back to the large cassette cog. If we look very closely when in the large cogs in the back, notice the narrow wide, how the chain seems to be pulled over as we pedal. And this results in some noise. If you look at the chain when you're in the largest cog, you'll notice that there's quite an angle running to the single chain ring. And if we apply a chain line indicator, we'll see that when the chain is parallel to the frame, it falls between the second and third cog, which is much too far over towards the small cog. We'd like to have it more towards the middle, maybe between the fifth and sixth cog to eliminate any noise. To try to prove this chain line, we're going to use a whole nother crank. Notice that the particular chain ring, the narrow wide, sits on the outside of the spider on this crank. And on a similar crank over here, sits on the inside, moving the chain line approximately four millimeters more towards the center of the frame. Now when we check our chain line with our chain line gauge. We can see the area parallel to the frame falls between the fourth and fifth cog, so there's some improvement. Let's see how it sounds. Now, when we shift to the larger cogs, a little less noise, and if we pedal backwards, we don't see the chain jump to a smaller cog. The advantage to a 1x system is we don't need a front derailleur, so shifting becomes quite simple just in the rear. But we do sacrifice the number of combinations of gears that we can use to that of the rear cog. I bring this up not for just for those that are going to convert to a 1x, but even on new systems, and we'll link to that uh, video from Sick Biker on some of the new 1x problems that we see. And it's worthwhile if you do go for a 1x system to listen to it in all the cogs and also even backpedal and 
make sure the chain doesn't jump from one to another. If there are additions, changes, or you have some experience with 1X, please comment below. Subscribe to keep up with our latest videos. This is Tony at Tony10Speed, Safe Cycling.